This is old school drag racing. I've got four hot women who are out here kicking butt. We get up here to the starting line, this game on, it's a serious battle. We just hope to keep the momentum going. We know that ride's gonna end someday. Anytime you open that blue barrel of nitromethane, anything can happen. The races are our blood. This is my 43rd year. I've raced ever since I've been a kid. You can't drive by sight, because if you drive by sight, you're too late. It's game on. I don't care who's in the other lane, it's all about winning that Iron Man. We're not giving up. It's gonna be uh, hard to hold. Our plan is to kick everybody's <laughs> Plans don't always happen. Anything can happen when the tree goes green. Welcome to the IHRA Nitro Jam. We are at the Rocky Mountain Nationals in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Let's recap last week's action from Grand Bend, Ontario. Race fans were not disappointed at one of Canada's premier motorsports events, the IHRA Nitro Jam Nationals from Grand Bend. At one of the largest drag racing events in Canada, the show featured a full lineup of competition. Winners included Canada's own hometown hero, Nate Gannon in Nitro Harley. He beat local racer Mike Perline by just over two hundredths of a second. Oh, oh, I will take it. <laughs> Ron Maroney's blind faith put him on the podium when he got the jump on competitor Troy Martin in Nitro Altered. Hey, it's great to be here again. We've been in the last three finals. We've won two out of the three. Um, feels great. I love this track. We always do well here at this track. I love the Canadian fans. 621, that's perfect. That's what we put in it. We thought it would take a low 20 to win it, maybe a high teen, ran a 621. We are thrilled. You know, we were hoping to win last weekend for my dad, um, but he was looking out for us this weekend. This one's for you, Dad. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. But all eyes are on Nitro Funny Car driver Jason Rupert. Failing to qualify just a week before, Rupert qualified first for the sixth time in his 69 Camaro. Rupert's time beat rival Mark Sander to take home yet another victory. 589, is that something um, that you are happy with? I, I was hoping it would have been a little better, but you know that sometimes as the day goes on, the track gets a little hotter, a little greasier, and didn't try to go crazy and try to beat ourselves but I, I thought it should have ran a little better but you know IHRA is putting on a great great series of events and uh, we're just happy to be a part of it. Rupert dominated the class claiming his fourth Ironman of the season. Elaine Larson impressed, coming home the winner again in Jet Dragster. Whew. I didn't know because, you know, you never know when you take off, and I'm so focused just on the finish line. You would think after 11 years driving a jet, I would, like, look and see who wins. I pretty much just am like, holy crap, just don't red light, don't screw up, just don't turn sideways and get down the track. Then Ontario native Anthony Payne bested fellow Canadian John Koenigshofer in Mountain Motor Pro Stock. a flywheel last night we wouldn't have been here today <laughs> you what now i broke my flywheel and he gave me one yeah because really? that's his that's, family that's guy. right yeah his we've family known each other boy. for a long time yeah. so. well that's really great actually yeah. it's such a good story and then yeah. that's you know the competitive nature of this sport yep is so friendly it's it is that's, that's what si is all we're about. just talking about in the lanes before we got in the cars and you know what this is home for all of us there's welcome news in the pits as the IHRA Nitro Gym revealed that points will matter at both Canadian Nationals next year. Standings now count as much as an Ironman in every Nitro Gym event. While Edmonton isn't a points race currently on the IHRA schedule, 
it has no shortage of fans. The fans here in Canada are just unbelievable. Uh, I've never had a place that, that would actually come and thank you for coming and it's just many as the fans do here. So that, that makes it worth the drive, you know, the, this is, it's a long, long haul up here. You know, the Canadians just love us coming to town. The stands are packed no matter what the weather is. It's absolutely beautiful this weekend. We couldn't ask for better weather, I don't think. But uh, we've been here times when we've battled rain or we've battled fog, we've battled this and that, cold weather. The fans come out no matter what it is and they stay in those stands until we get done. This is the biggest event on the IHRA circuit all year long. There'll be 15 to 20,000 people here on Saturday. Sunday's not as much, Friday's not as much, but Saturday, yeah, we have a killer crowd. Yeah, it's definitely a huge crowd to be running in front of, and we're happy a lot of them are, you know, supporters of us, definitely. Both races, Nitro Jams that we have in Canada are fantastic. The fan base is, is super. Always super excited about being here. Great crowds every time. More from the Rocky Mountain Nationals presented by Good Vibrations when we return the IHRA Nitro Jam. We're back at the Rocky Mountain Nationals presented by Good Vibrations from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Safety for the drivers, crews, and the fans is always a priority in the world of IHRA. The Nitro Jam safety crew is a dedicated team of individuals who are vigilant at keeping the races exciting, but the situation safe. You don't need to mop, just run your hand across the track and make sure there's no oil on the car, buddy. The term safety first is often used in motorsports, and it's a motto the folks of the IHRA safety crew live by. Although a quarter mile race lasts just a few seconds, problems with a motor, an error by the driver, or even the slightest change in track conditions can cause an accident. Their team, made up of firefighters and EMTs, is totally capable of handling a wreck at these dangerously high speeds. Their duties include extinguishing fires, assessing a driver's condition, getting them out of the car, and cleaning up the track after a wreck. Some of the craziest things that happen, obviously with our fuel funny cars, they're the most dangerous weapons that we deal with. The drivers are encapsulated inside of a body, and when that thing lights up on them, it's everywhere. It encapsulates the driver, the cockpit, and everything. So that's probably one of our biggest issues. Being down here, you're liable to see just about anything. Anything from a fire to a, an accident to, uh, to helping drivers get out of cars or not only handling that part of it, but being sure that the racing surface itself is in proper condition, clean and safe for everybody. The procedure used by the safety team after a crash is just as important as those that help prevent one. Typically in an oil down procedure or anything that may happen on the racetrack itself, we use a call called shutdown and basically anyone within the facility can make that call. Um, but typically if we make that call down here, it's because we've seen something or we know that a car may be leaking fluid and that instructs everyone on the other end of the drag strip to stop everything that's going on. And then once we know that the car is on the line and the racing surface is shut down, we will come out and do the inspection and see what we need to do from there. While each track is different, the safety team must ensure that the track is prepared to not only handle the speed, but a large volume of cars. With the amount of cars that we have here this weekend, and just about any weekend really, you have rubber build up on the track. As the cars run over it, to keep it from rolling up, you basically take it back down to a base layer and get it to lay back down real good and smooth again. It kinda cleans it all up very good too. During these intense races, cars can fail and their parts or oil can potentially damage the surface. When this happens, the IHRA takes specific steps to make sure the track surface remains safe. Depending on where the oil is located, if it's anything on the glued surface of the racetrack, we use a scrubber. It's kind of like a Zamboni they use for hockey rinks. And basically it applies hot water and detergent to the racing surface with bristles 
and then it has a squeegee and dries it up behind it. Anything that's done past the finish line this way, we use powder with a spreader. It's applied with a spreader that has an agitator in it that we pull behind some sort of vehicle. Go ahead, farm back up. A big part of what the safety crew does allows the drivers to safely compete while the fans stay closer to the action. The crew was recently put to the test when Ronnie Young's Blue Max provided a scary moment at the Palm Beach Nationals. His machine went up in flames at the big end and drove straight into the catch fence. That was a pretty big fire. Ronnie could not get out of the car on his own. We had to get him out of that car. You know, and I happened to be the diver that day. I was inside the car with him. He could talk to me, but he could not get his belts undone. I had one guy on either side of the car that was pushing the fire ahead of us, keeping it off of me and him at the same time. But the smoke was just so heavy, Ronnie couldn't see what to do. While Young walked away from the crash, the Nitro Jam safety crew was there in what could have been a much more serious situation. So that's my job to be able to do that blindly to get him unbuckled out of that car as fast as I possibly can. So it happened, he was fine. He had a little smoke inhalation. We took him to the hospital for a treatment. He was back within three hours. That's a great end. It's time to go racing. Just like the drivers, the safety crew travels with the series. Our crew is fantastic. Pretty much all of us have been doing this for a long time and it's a huge family. We care about each other and we typically talk throughout the week no matter whether we see each other or not. We try to have a good time when we're out here for 14 hours a day sometimes. We need to laugh and cut up and we're, we're, we're a huge family. It's nothing for us to spend hours at a time at a drag strip and most people think we're crazy, but it's the love of the sport that keeps us coming back and we just keep coming back after it. Having the IHRA safety team ensures that anyone involved in an accident will get the chance to race another day. More from the Rocky Mountain Nationals presented by Good Vibrations in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, when we return. We're back at the Rocky Mountain Nationals. Let's meet a man who can truly say, been there, built that in drag racing. One of the most famous men in pro stock history, legendary chassis builder, Jerry Haas. How are you feeling about IHRA being back? Oh, play, IHRA being back and not Motor Pro Soft, that's the heart of IHRA. My God, they just run two 637s and 219. I mean, for a factory hot rod, a mountain motor, 637, and IHRA welcome them back. That is unbelievable. There is no builder in the sport today that has received more recognition than Jerry. You know, for the last few years, there's been a lot of eighth mile racing. You've been involved with a lot of that, and here we are stretching these things back out. And I gotta imagine that when you see those cars run down through there, 219 miles an hour, it's gotta make you feel good. Oh, it makes bumps come up on your neck. They are awesome. This mountain motor thing is you, ain't it? Oh, absolutely. Nothing better. <laughs> I always enjoy hanging out with you and talking to you. And it's awesome to see you here at the IHRA race with the Mountain Motor Pro Stock cars. Only at IHRA will you see this man with the Mountain Motor cars kicking butt. He always kicks butt. And always Clay Milligan, my buddy. <laughs> Speaking of Pro Stock, let's take a look at the cars and the drivers in the series. First up is Jerry's favorite, Mountain Motor Pro Stock. These powerful machines were handcuffed for a few seasons with runs of only 660 feet. The IHRAs decided to let them loose again. Runs back to the quarter mile show off their raw power and speed. Crazy, suicidal, insane. Words used to describe the drivers of the nitro fuel altered class. The recipe is simple. Short wheelbase, check. Tiny frame, check. 2,000 horsepower, check. And add a little nitro, just for excitement. 
No wonder these fast and extremely difficult handling sleds were banned for over 30 years. Nitro Jam is proud to bring these monsters back into the fold and let the fans see what drag racing was really like back in the day. Some of the historic monikers in the Nitro Altered Series include Ron Hope's Rat Trap. Also in the class is Ron Maroney's Hemi-powered Blind Faith. One of the reasons why fuel altered are so hard to handle is they have basically the same motor, transmission, everything that the funny cars do, except for a shorter wheelbase, and we have very little downforce. So I think the fans really like it because they don't know what to expect. It can go straight as an arrow, one run, and we don't change anything in the car, and the next run, it's all over the track. Ron has 10 wins, five runner-ups, and was the altered champion in Nitro Jam for 2011. The competition also includes popular driver Don Blackshear driving the Bullet Bob car. And Kyle Hoag's 23 Ford Nanook. Consistently thundering the crowd to its feet are the Nitro Funny Cars. These behemoths are the fastest growing class in all of drag racing. It's a simple recipe, old school styling on the outside, latest greatest tech on the inside. Giving fans half track burnouts, header flames, and some of the out of control racing they've come to expect. These cars were born as modern tributes to the famous rides that came before them. Passes in the five second range at over 250 mile an hour make this class fast, loud, and exciting. Here we go, here we go. In Nitro, you can always count on Mr. Explosive, Mark Sanders, to ignite the crowd. Oh, it's a bad man, the thing was, you know, oh, shit, it's like you ever put your head in a paint shaker, baby. Delivering is Bruce Litton in the U.S. mail car. With Mike McIntyre is back for the attack in the Mac attack. But the Nitro Funny Car Series is being dominated by Jason Rupert's fever catching Black Plague. When Nitro Jam returns, they look back at the season so far from Edmonton at the Rocky Mountain Nationals. Welcome back to the IHRA Nitro Jam. We're taking a look back at the season so far from the Rocky Mountain Nationals. Following the pros in Nitro Jam, we've witnessed some great competition on and off the track. After seven events this season, the racing is still neck and neck. Some of the most wheel popping action comes from the Nitro Fed Harleys. Iconic racer Jay Turner has led the class along with Randall Andros, Canadian Mike Scott, and Mark Cox. It's been stiff competition in Nitro Harley because Randall Andros has reached the semifinals in every race. With that consistent effort, it finally helped him grab a win. However, Canadian Mike Scott, fresh off his second victory in Rockingham, really scored big with a win in Maryland. This pushes him even closer to the top in the points battle. What about the crazy fuel alters? Remember the name, Ron Maroney. He and Blind Faith have extended the lead with wins at both Rockingham and Grand Bend. While Mike Hilzebeck, Don Blackshear, and Kyle Hogue are all trying to close that gap. Every Mountain Motor Pro Stock race has been a nail biter. There's a reason it's called racing and not winning.
No one knows that more than Brad Waddle, Kevin Bilko, and two-time IHRA champ, Pete Berner, still searching for that elusive Iron Man. And everyone is finding it hard to create a den in the Kerry Go Forth Championship lead. But don't tell Todd Horner or John DeFlorian, who are steadily chipping away at the points. The IHRA brings innovation once again, giving Jet Dragsters a championship point system all their own. Did we mention it's an all-female lineup from Larson Motorsports? While Elaine Larson and Marisha Falk were all tied earlier in the season, Larson brought home two more trophies, quickly moving her up. And jet driver Dawn Perdue makes it into the finals in four events, then scores her own Ironman. Halfway through the season, rookie Kat Moeller is finding her stride. Leading the way into the Nitro Funny Cars is Jason Rupert with four wins. Rupert 69, Bays and Rupert Black Plague Camaro won for the third time this season at Rockingham. He bested three-time IHRA champion Peter Gallen in the classic Nitro Funny Car Showdown. The following week, during the President's Cup at Maryland International Raceway, the unthinkable happened when Rupert failed to qualify. It ended his impressive streak of number one qualifiers. But what a difference a week makes. He was back for the attack at Grand Bend. Rupert qualified first again, and then backed it up with a victory at the Nitro Gem Nationals at the Bend, driving his lead even further in the championship over the larger than life Mr. Explosive Mark Sanders. The season's only half over, so get ready for more side-by-side -side action next week in Cordova, Illinois. There you go. That's it from Edmonton at the Rocky Mountain Nationals. From all of us here at Nitro Jam, I'm Clay Milliken. We'll catch you next time.